Okay, here's a short little video on box and whisker plots and what they are. Some people like them because it's kind of cute. There's a little box and whiskers like a kitty cat, but that's not really what we're going to talk about. Box and whisker plots, here we come. Here is a basic box and whisker plot des describing the mean, well, that's this one doesn't have the mean, the median, the quartiles, and the extremes of a data set, and it displays how they're distributed, kind of. Um, this is some kind of athlete's player's weight, so I'll give you a chance to guess what they are in a little while. Um, and what it is, is with a box and whisker plot, each quarter of the data has its own little piece. Here's the first quartile right there between 165 and 197.5 is a quarter of the people. Between 197.5 and 220 pounds is a quarter of the people. Between 220 pounds and 238 pounds is a quarter of the people. And between 238 and 310 pounds is a quarter of the people. So it displays the lightest weight person on the team, the heaviest person on the team over here, the median, so the man in the middle right there, and this is the player's weights. Each piece is a quartile. 25% of the data is shown in each quartile. 50% of the data is within the interquartile range or inside the box. So 50% of the men on this athletic team weigh between 197.5 and 220. Do you have any guesses to what kind of athletes these are? Um, hockey? Golf! Okay, no, <laughs> I was thinking football when I first saw it, but then I thought 165 was pretty small for football. These are actually NBA players, so they're tall and lanky, and it's a specific team, but we're not going to get into the data set. Now that you kind of know how to interpret a box and whisker plot, let me ask you a couple other things. If 50% of the men weigh between 197.5 and 238 pounds, is there somewhere else where there's 50% of the men? Would it be on the outside? The, the outside. Okay, so inside the box, in here, is 50% of the men, which also means that out here, whoosh, outside of 197.5 and 238, less than 197.5 or two, more than 238 is 50% of the men. What about how many, what percent of the, the men weigh between, say, 197.5 and 310 pounds? 75%? 75 because it's one, two, three quartiles of the people. Okay. I have a question, Mr. Yeah. Crossan. Where's Q2? Q2, all right. Q2, well, there's a Q1, and there's a Q3, and those are quarti quartiles. So a quarter of the way through, like the 25-yard line on a football field is here. And over here is three quarters of the way through, like the 75-yard line. Right here would be Q2. But... It's, it's two quarters, which we would call a half. So that's the median. It's the halfway point. Good? Mm -hmm. Good? Okay. All right. Now let's make a box and whisker plot. Okay. We're actually going to make two box and whisker plots. We're going to compare two classes. We're going to compare Miss Smith's class and Miss Jones' class. What we're going to do first is we're going to do Miss Smith's class together, and then I'm going to have you all pause the vid video and do Miss Jones' class. This is the sheet you should have printed out before you watch this video. Okay, so here's Miss Smith's class. We're going to go ahead and get them in order from lowest to highest, um, because in order to find the median, you need to find the person in the middle of the group, which would be not in any random order. You have to line them up from the, the smallest to the, to the largest. And here we're going to do, um, this is quiz scores between the two classes. So 12 is the first. And when you write it down, putting them in order, you probably want to mark them somehow that you've done it so that you don't have to do it again and make sure you've got everything. So 12 was first. 74 looks like the next thing. So we're going to go ahead and write down 74. Next we've got a 76. And then We've got the 78. Do you see the 78? After 78, we've got a 79. Then an 80. Then an 82. Then an 85. 86. 
Oh look, there's two 86's. So we have to write that one down again because if we're going to line everybody up, we need everybody included. 86 again, and then we've got a 93, a 95, and a 97 was the highest score on this quiz. So here we have everybody lined up lowest to highest. Um, for the mean, you don't actually need lowest to highest. You just add them all up. You all know how to do that. So if you add up all the scores in the entire class, you have 1,023. And how many people were in this class? You count it to make sure. There's two reasons to count it. One, because you need it for the mean. And two, you need to make sure that you've written them all down here. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 13 there. We cross them off, but just to double check, let's make sure we have 13 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Good. We included everybody most likely. That saves a lot of mistakes. So 1,023 divided by 13 is approximately equal to 78.69. Okay, or 78.7. .7. It doesn't really matter at this point how you want to say that. Or even 79. It doesn't, however you want to round at this point is fine. So for the median, we need to find the middle of this data set. And to find the middle of the data set, there's formulas and things, but the easiest way to do it is to start on the outside and just work your way in, covering them up one at a time. So we cover up that most outside, which is the minimum and the maximum. We go in one, cover up cover up another, cover up another, cover up another, go in one more, and there's one number left in the middle. I like to indicate that number with a green triangle that looks a little bit like a pine tree because of a Diamond Rio song about meeting in the middle underneath the old Georgia pine tree, which I'll give you guys a link to so you can see what I'm talking about. What All right. happens if there's two numbers in the middle? If there's two numbers in the middle, which there's not in this case, but there might be sometime in the near future, you take the two numbers, say it's these two numbers, which doesn't make sense because they're not in order, so say it's these two, and you would add them up and find the average of the two. And actually that's going to happen for a quartile, so I'll show you there. All right, so here's the median. Let's go ahead and write that down. Our median in this set is 82. Do you all remember what a mode is? Times? The most times, yes. And in this data set, there's just these two 86s. That's the only thing that's even repeated. So that's definitely the mode in this case. And then the range is just the highest number minus the lowest number. So our range of this data set is 85. So there's 85 points between the lowest score on the quiz and the highest score on the quiz. All right, now let's look at this thing called a five-number summary. A five-number summary is really what you need to make a box and whisker plot. The five-number summary includes the minimum score, the first quartile, the median, which is also the second quartile, but we reduce the fraction. It's a median, not a, a second quarter. The third quartile, and then the maximum. And they need to be in order with commas in brackets. So the minimum for this data set right here was the 12, the lowest score on the quiz. Q1 we haven't found yet, so I'm going to leave it blank for a minute, minute. The median is that 82. Q3 we haven't found yet. The max is the highest score up here, so a 97. Let's go ahead and write those down. As for the quartiles, what we do there is we look at the upper half and the lower half, and we find the middle of the upper half. 82 is the median, therefore it is not in the upper half, nor is it in the lower half. It's in the middle, so we're going to ignore the median when we're calculating the quartiles. Okay, so to find the middle of this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six things here. You can go ahead and cover up two at a time, whatever you need to do to find that middle point. Well, here it's between the 86 and the 93 that gives us 3 on each side. So we need to take the 86 plus the 93 and divide it by 2. That gives us an 89.5. And that's how you would do it to find the median in an actual data set. You do that. So we're going to go ahead and write our 89.5 right here. And then we'll look to find the Q1. 
here's the, the lower half, which also has the six data points. Six data points. So right in here is the middle of those six data points. Between 76 and 78, most of you can see that that quartile would be a 77. Now we have those things written down. Um, and we need the inner quartile range, which is the width of that box in the box and whisker plot, where the middle 50% of your data lie. So that is Q3 minus Q1, which is 89.5 minus 77. So that's 12.5. So 50% of the class had a range of scores that was 12 and a half points wide. All right, so next is skew. Skew is simply comparing the mean and the median. In this case, the mean was 82. The median was 82, excuse me. The mean was 78.6, and the median was 82. You can think of the median like a median on a highway. It doesn't move. So in this case, the median that's always in the middle stays there and the mean was brought down. You can even tell in this data set that that 12, if this was all your scores and you got a 12 on something, that would definitely skew your average down. So for this data set, you've got that the, me the mean is less than the median. So that 78.7 is less than the 82. So this is skewed negatively or to the left to the left okay so yes it is skewed negatively to the left all right now we're going to actually draw the box and whisker plot here we go um, we've got the 12 is our minimum the box starts at a 77 the box ends at an 89.5, which is pretty much there. So there's our beauteous box. Okay, the median was an 82, so right there. The high score was a 97. We're going to go down to that 12. Here's our box and whisker plot. It shows that 50% of the grades were in here, 25% were here. Let's go ahead and pause the video now, and you guys do Mrs. Jones' class, and then we'll compare.